You see me conquer grounded in 100 days before, but could I do it without dying a single time? You see my most recent fails, but the bout to show you now is my best start ever in grounded. Of course, until it wasn't the best start. Streaming on my 100 days channel, 7 p.m. UK time, 2 p.m. Eastern most days. Go see my adventures in Small Lands and Sons of the Forest and hopefully cheer me on to do 100 days of grounded in hardcore. Let's go. Ah, a new fresh challenge smell. Starting off as always, gathering resources and scanning everything. Starting off with grass and then crafting it into a rope. The rope first. Why? Because then this unlocks all of the necessary tools you'll need in the early steps quickly. Gather more resources, craft yourself your axe and you're pretty much good to go. If you can get a hammer as well, then even better. You only need four pieces of nat fuzz to make your bow, so that's always best advice to try and take care of the ones that are hovering around near the mysterious science machine. Turn the machine on and of course it's time to take care of the mite cave, although don't forget you've got to chop the grass too. And always scan the grass pieces as that's going to give you access to more base building. On their own the mites aren't that dangerous, but surprisingly when there's four or five of them it can be a bit of a challenge, so do try and get yourself a torch, although I'm such a pro at this game now that I don't need one. If you bring your hammer in here, you can get through to the area with the upgrade rocks. Although since your hammer isn't going to break through them, there's not much point yet until you get a tier 2 one. Back on top, it's getting some food and getting a weevil. Kill as many of these as possible so you've got a chance of getting their nose, as you'll need that for a gas mask later. Also scan the weevil so that you can go ahead and craft a shield, you'll need 4 pieces. Then it was back to the science machine and always scanning as much as possible in the early days to unlock new gear. Job done, with literally like 10 minutes, we've got through and activated the science machine, and now it's gonna be off to the open. Not forgetting, of course, now you can see the science, the raw science everywhere, so make sure you start gathering some of that, especially now that you can dupe items with it, so it's definitely worth getting more of the missions and picking up every piece that you can. Up to the oak tree, pick up some pieces, as you'll need this for oak armor if you wanna go heavy, and then through to the oak laboratory. More importantly is the acorn top, so that you've got the smoothie maker. Don't make too many bandages, you'll find plenty in here and don't worry too much about sap, again you'll get plenty inside. Fill up on the water and then pick up burgle. You also get granola bars which are handy at healing you in the early stages, although you might want to keep them for boss fights. Activate the terminal and go ahead and get your quests. You need to get these completed more often now, like I said, now that you're going to have more reasons to dupe items. Through the other door and pick up the 500 raw science as well as some more date items and we'll be back here for that gold molar eventually when we get a tier 2 hammer. Top tip from spicy, throw your hammer instead of actually using it and you can obliterate these acorn pieces super super quick. So once I got some of that it was time to set up our base and I decided somewhere new on each attempt of my 100 days in hardcore. Today it was going to be on Rash Island which is surprisingly safe apart from a few mosquitoes and eventually some wasps. But for now, it was perfect. Crafted a bunch of spears by accident, set up my cooking, and we went over to the hedge to go and scan some more items before the end of the day. It's all about packing in as much as you can in the first few days, doing quests and scanning as many items as possible. Mainly though, I wanted to scan aphid so I could go ahead and get my favorite piece of armor, the aphid slippers. Got myself some berry chunks and we took care of some mites as well as an ant on the way home. So if you've got the slippers, as well as having 20 locations discovered, you'll get Natural Explorer, which I really find useful for getting around quickly. The next level for that mutation is 50 locations, and the third level is 80. All that done in day one, that's a pretty good haul. Now it's time to go and get our first accessory, one of the badges from the Omniant Corpse lying close to this pipe. This would give you parry heal, which means that as long as you perfect parry, you get back the healing that you would have took in terms of damage. But it does mean though your resistance is lowered, so if you do get hit, you're going to take more damage. It's always worth killing a bunch of larvae early, as you're going to need plenty of their pincers to go ahead and craft an upgrade later. Of course, you should all know now, peeping creatures gives you a lowdown on what their weaknesses and strengths are, so make sure you peep everything whenever you get a chance. Surprisingly, so many of you miss out on upgrading your weapons, so make sure you get the actual anvil up and running by getting tier 1 pieces like marble and shards. Not forgetting you'll find loose pieces also in the abandoned anthill just by Burgle's lab. You can also see I'm picking up lots of the quests now and finishing them off, and I needed a bit more fluff for my actual bow. 
Nice easy weapon to get of course is the Sword in the Stone which is a Rotten Larvae blade which does a bit of poison damage and good slashing. It becomes twice as useful once you get the Rotten Berry Charm but we'll talk about that later. Next you're going to need a bunch of that sludge if you want to make some smoothies until we get more resources later so make sure you dig up plenty of them. And don't worry about any larvae around the oak tree, they changed that a little while ago, you shouldn't have any spawning within the first few days anymore, if at all. So like I said you can pick up some upgrade pieces if you go around the back of the actual laboratory in the oak tree. Never go into that pool of water that you can see a hole just as I go past it here until you've got some proper breathing apparatus and some decent lights. Make your way back up to the top of the laboratory and you should come across them bits on the floor and that should be just enough to craft your anvil. Only go through the old ant hill if you really have got a decent chance of taking on three or four ant soldiers. Back at base and we finally got our anvil finished. I always try and upgrade the aphid slippers as I know I'm going to continue to use them all throughout my run. And it might be seemingly wasteful upgrading weapons that you'll soon get rid of but you're better off having some extra damage on your basic gear knowing that you can get plenty of them basic upgrade materials just by completing the game. Especially in hardcore mode, you need to go as strong as possible whenever you can. And no, throwing your spade at clay doesn't work, but you can block as soon as you hit it to get that quickness rather than taking so long. Day 2 complete, I finished off some food and we made sure we had plenty of storage space for all the items that we'll be getting. All that talk of shields and I had actually forgot to craft one, so there we go, now we've got even more defensive options. I also forgot to get myself some arrows, so it's time to get some of the thistle needles. Also a great place to get more than that fuzz, just in case you can't find the two that usually hang around the science machine. Building up my raw science after completing missions every single day, I spent some of them as I started to explore the hedge. My original plan was just to scout a little bit, get everything up to the laboratory, open the laboratory up and then come back later as you're often overwhelmed with resources. But I did enjoy it and felt like things were going well so I got really brave by the time we got there. Of course we had to get there still, just taking care of the spiderlings, we tiptoed our way across the branches until the very first zip line. We'll come back to that laboratory later as I didn't really need the scanner right now and I definitely didn't feel like I had enough good armour as I'd only managed to craft myself some clover gear. Now with the right kind of resources with you, you can actually make sure you can craft a tier 2 axe and maybe your hammer by the time you get to the hedge laboratories, as long as you're willing to fight a whole bunch of spiderlings and taking care of the eggs axe, they've got a chance of dropping lots of vital bug parts you might need. For the tier 2 axe of course, the main one was getting a ladybug head. Along the way stopping off for more resources in the broken parts of the laboratory and don't forget you can get some water hanging from the ceiling here, that's something that a lot of people miss out on. Back to creeping along and back to taking care of more of the egg sacs. Bombardier beetle parts will always come in handy especially when you've got to think about how many you need for your drying rack. We continued on our adventures and there's so many up on here the frisbee, very occasionally though they can be knocked down or they'll start rolling down if some of the bugs hit them. But there we go, I had my ladybug head. One last broken laboratory to do, and then we'd be in the main part. I'm still not the best at perfect blocking enough, really. Hey, we've got a chopper though. But as long as you've got a shield, you don't need to be the best at perfect blocking. It'll definitely help out a lot. Into the main laboratory, and it's time to press the button. And this will gain access to the laboratory door at the bottom, so no matter what, I would be able to get back normally but because this is a hardcore run I couldn't risk dying and coming and getting my gear. And yeah the cockiness got to me, I got a bit overconfident so I decided to clear it out now instead of going all the way home and dumping my gear. There's plenty of meals, there's also water and you've got everything you need including the crafting bench and scanner to make new stuff. The biggest threat does come from some of these but you'd be surprised how dangerous a bunch of spiderlings can be if you're going a bit too mad taking care of the web sacks. And you've always got that risk of getting poisoned which can really knock out your health so make sure you've got plenty of heals. You can see my beautiful slippers were already damaged so I'd need to repair them. So this is probably the one that you could have come here with just some clover leggings or something else rather than them. Don't forget to analyse the ladybug head and that's how you get the axe and the faceplate for the ladybug armour. You need four pieces of silk rope and just two more bombardier parts. Gathering up the first password piece I then decided to see if I could get more bombardier parts from these x axe. I honestly can't say it enough, do not attack a bunch of them at once, it's no fun fighting 7 or 8 of these guys at once. They can quickly decimate your health and this was nearly the end of my challenge on only day 2. But I know when to run and when to fight. 
They have definitely fixed. You used to be able to sync them up. Like if you defended perfect block one, they would all attack at the same time. But they definitely, it feels like they've fixed that now. And that has been a problem in the game for ages. What do you guys think? Since the latest update, has combat got a bit more challenging? I think so. We've got so many different bug parts here, but not the things I needed. So I had to carry on progressing through the rest of the lab. Not forgetting that these guys are to take more damage from obviously your hammer, even if it is a bit slow. With all the parrying I've been doing, I finally got Parry Master, and don't forget to pick up the figurines. All of these can contribute to helping you get the Rascal Rogue mutation that's in the game now, that allow you to steal items from enemies when you're fighting them. Cleared out the last of these guys, and then it was down the parasail to password number two. Ideally, you want to come through here normally with a tier two hammer so you can get the milk motors on the way. And that had been originally part of my plans. But because I was doing so well, and like I said, I figured I could always come back and just run through to get the last things. Especially taking care of everything that's on the floor as well, that does take a bit of time. So all the way up to the top, and this is the storage room where you can now pick up some of the spider silk. Once you've taken care of the lone little spider and guard. Now, 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 now. Perfect place also to go ahead and repair any of your clover armor that you might be wearing, as there's plenty of stuff there. Now it's time to go down the zip line and drop just before the edge, fall down the hole and get password number three. Back in the central room where you've got the crafting bench, take care of the berry and zip line down to password and the last piece of number four. Sometimes you're lucky, sometimes you're not. There might be a Orb Weaver Junior in here. And if you're going for 100% completion, don't forget to get the scab that's hanging off the edge. Again, my confidence was already a bit too sky high, but I definitely still needed more bug parts, namely the bombardier. So I managed to get some, but I'd unleashed way too many spiderlings and nearly really nearly died. Nearly really really died. Oh! Oh! Oh my god! They're everywhere! They're everywhere! Does your ear feel violated? I hope so. There must have been eight or nine of these guys attacking me at once. And I do believe I had the badge on. That was meaning I was taking more damage because I wasn't perfect parrying. I eventually got back out there, took them on one by one before eventually clearing out the rest of the room. Now I had everything to craft the tier two axe just by the end of day two. Open the last doors and go and get the super chip as well as the brand new super duper tape that you'd use to super dupe stuff. So I need plenty of berry level for the tier two hammer. We'd need to get a jerky rack up and running, plus the boiling gland and some stink bug legs. But for now, I went ahead and upgraded a bunch of my stuff to start off day three. And yep, you guessed it, it was time to hunt down some bombardier beetles and see if we could get enough to make the jerky rack and more. Definitely recommend axes for these guys as it felt to be doing quite a lot of damage. Obviously that was because I was using that tier two axe. Now if you've been doing lots of missions, you could potentially use some of that raw science to go and dupe some of the items you needed. But I would say in this early stage, you've probably not got enough and you want to be spending that raw science on more of the unlocks instead. No idea why, but I decided to go through the old ant hill and decimate the ants that were living there, taking care of the soldiers. Maybe it's because I wanted some of the acid sacks and they do have a chance of dropping them. But once again, I sailed a little bit close to death on this occasion, even with a tier 2 axe and a good shield, it was still very close. But it certainly wasn't as close as against the spiderlings and weighed my way out there. Before night fell I wanted to carry on finishing some of the missions which were to put these down at some locations and I got myself chopper tier mutation 2. And with the last location spotted, that was it, we were done for the day. I'd start crafting more of the amenities we needed like the dew collector and making sure we had things like the wheel spinner too. With this finished off, we had enough now to start spinning our own web, and this was gonna contribute a lot to all the other stuff we needed. I had a strange dream, because I'd obviously gone and got the first chip. And I began day four, taking out more bombardier beetles. Oh, for fun. What was I doing with this? I was with jerky rack, jerky rack. Yes. Oh. Finally, I can now start getting the lever I needed to get on my way to a tier two hammer. I'd also got enough of the stink bug parts to craft the gas mask, which made taking on the stink bugs a lot easier. So I'd done quite a few things kind of backwards or higgledy piggledy. Normally you would do the ant hill first before going to the hedge. So I thought it was time to now go and get some more resources. I could have probably waited another day just for that berry lever to be done. And then I could have got the milk molars as well as the ice caps in here. 
but you're always going to come back down here to get the ant eggs so you can craft bombs so it's no real loss and yes i was wearing full ant armor that way the ants would leave me alone always grab your eggs from right down at the bottom that way there's not as many ants to see you stealing them as that's when they still go aggro and if there's no eggs at all well you know what you gotta do you gotta kill a whole ton of ants to hopefully get them to spawn the next day but the anthill was just filled with so many good upgrade resources and a bunch of raw science so do make sure you go down there in the early days in fact i had way too many eggs now i needed to find some of the fluff with the gas mask this became a lot easier although i didn't want to venture too far and come up against an infected ladybug or too many of the larvae let these guys explode and you're guaranteed still to get one piece of fungal growth and then i went and took care of some of the infected mites before finishing off against another stink bug you want to get as many bombs as you can but four is a really good amount so that would mean eight fungal growths the mites aren't too tough but just like anything if there's a lot of them they can cause you some problems but i finally finished this one off and we had seven pieces of fungal growth now there's one more spot I was going to go rather than go deeper into the haze, right around the back of Rake Rock. You can even lure these two out with a few arrows or going into the haze without a gas mask and quickly out. Don't forget they knock weapons out of your hand. You can also pick up some bombardier beetle parts as the bombardier beetle will often die or you'll find a body here. Now I definitely had enough pieces, eight in total, to craft all the bombs that I wanted. I grabbed bombardier beetle parts and then it was time to go back and scan in the egg of course so that I could actually make the bombs. And there we go, we can now go and get ourselves a serious weapon and to go and do the black ant hill if you really wanted, otherwise you could save them to get on top of the picnic table or even go up to the upper yard. Now I had the tier 2 axe, it was time to get some crow feathers and make some better arrows. And although I've taken out a couple of these before and they've actually showed you me defeating them, they're much easier now that you can block with a shield and help stun them and make them fall to the ground. And because we had done the hedge already, it was again easier to run up the shortcut. I'd managed to get my tier 2 hammer now as well, so we were really good to go in clearing up a lot of the lower yard to get loads of resources. With a bit of careful parkour though, jumping up to the upper highlands, but again not going too deep, just around the slabs, you've got an easy way to get into the berry lab. Just make sure you bring a tuft of grass with you and we're going to jump down into here. I'd now switch also to the bee armor set as it gave slightly better stats than the clover and obviously it was easy to get hold of I haven't found it in the anthill. Don't be too close to setting this off as it can often do a lot of damage even when you think you're relatively safe. <laughs> Scrubbing all the upgrade materials and of course the pinch whacker, one of the best weapons you can get if you can get it early in the game and it will last especially all the way through to the end now that you can upgrade it more. Just don't forget to maybe think about duping it once you get all three levels unlocked that way if you ever lose one you've always got a backup. Also managed to get the berry charm as well, which would then make the larvae blade, as well as the bee stinger that you can find in the Tyrannosaurus Rex's mouth, which I'll show you guys, much more better and usable as a weapon. Quick return to Burgle to hand in the chips and buy more unlocks and get more missions. Obviously I tend to ignore a lot of the cosmetic stuff, I was just focused on getting a good start. Buff lungs is still one of my favorite mutations as it gives you that much extra stamina and it's probably time to get the cookery one too. Now my tier 2 hammer could go back along to some of the places and pick up a lot of the milk molars and finally start upgrading our character. I usually go max resource first then consumables and usually max health and healing for the actual regular milk molars. It was the beginning of day 6 and we had all tier 2 gear and items to really start clearing up a lot of parts of the yard including the switch to pick up the scab and not forgetting not to touch the plug sockets as that can kill you with one hit and no there is no special charm hidden inside the plug socket and then it was a quick zip around to some of the places in the hedge that i'd missed out on earlier including where we can turn on the scanners using my new pinch whacker weapon and this is why i rate this as my best ever start it's not a speed run by any means but in terms of hardcore and the progress I'd made, I definitely hadn't got this far in such a short space of time. Some tricky stuff you should know, jump on top of the red wire that goes through the hedge and you can go backtracking up across and then slightly across to the branch here and this is where you can get a scab and another milk molar on top of the juice carton. There are other ways of course, but I find this the easiest way. You just got to shimmy and do a little hop with your tuft. It's then a little bit more of a delicate jump just across to the right there we go there's the milk mode on the juice carton and there's the scab back to the main laboratory to get the mega milk on the branch 
and one of the last Mega Milks on top of the laboratory, way up at the top. And while you're here now, you might as well go and get the last milk molar, as well as the recipe for fighting the Broodmother, the BLT that you would need to summon her. So first I went and got the milk molar, avoiding just that little tricky part with the strap, and then a delicately climbing the branch. I had managed to get one of the special tusks, which gives you a little bit more tough time, instead of just running out very quickly. Another 500 raw science, the BLT, and another scab. Last thing to do was get some of the milk molars on the ground, already underneath the main laboratory. Just next to the hedge you'll find a stink bug. I wasn't using the best weapon, tier 2 axe is definitely better than the pinch whacker. Once it was defeated, I went and got the mega milk molar that was in the corner. I went and paid homage to the forest cave, the creepy one with all the ant heads, and of course the rotten ant club. You need to finish with the hedge, we wouldn't have to come back here for a long time, getting all the rest of the upgrade rocks amongst the roots, and another milk molar hidden in the corner, before getting the big chest filled with more upgrade stuff on the way home. I was feeling pretty cocky now, so I was taking on all sorts of creatures, including the all weavers. Yeah, you right there pal? Are you right there mate? Once he stopped shaking, I went and finished the job, not before being surprised by some kamikaze spiderlings. Finally got home and on day 7 it was time to really start focusing on getting more upgrades and finishing off brand new areas. I would actually stayed up quite late doing bits and bobs and so I didn't have much daylight time left and by the time I started exploring some of the fire bugs had come along so I decided to take a few out and get some more nat fuzz. We went and upgraded more of our molars, not forgetting that mutations is really something that you want to get at least three of them going as soon as possible. I thought about making the helmet with the light on, but I was still lacking a few resources. So I gave up on that idea and decided it was time to go and do the pond. Setting up a small camp nearby, I went and got the stuff needed to make the first pebble dagger. Don't forget to kill lots of wolf fleas, as you can get food and water from them, and they can come in clutch because you don't need to cook them, and then I got the rest of the grass I needed. Went and killed a few of the boatmen, so we could have some of the flippers. And another top tip, them as well as the diving bell spiders will always replenish a big chunk of your oxygen when you've killed them. If you really think you can't make it up top and you can see one's pretty low, absolutely go and finish the job. Or maybe leave it really low until you really need the oxygen as it will give it to you when you kill them rather than when you loot them. Then it was down the hole where you find the T-Rex statue, you can see the bubbles coming up through the pipes and I grabbed the bee stinger. Now you can go ahead and get the raw science underneath and then you should really go back to the pipe and get some more air. But I was being bitty big balls and carried on swimming and took the advantage of going fast through here. We have to get through to the laboratory quickly but we're going to have to use one of the hand analyzers and that takes some time. Grabbing the 500 raw science on the tube on the way, we were nearly there but would I make it? Only literally 12 seconds left on the clock, I just about got through the door and got my oxygen in time. You do absolutely need a breathing stick, only the absolute pros are grounded will come in here without one. Now we have to go and flip all the breakers. Although I decided to go and take care of the RR, this is the first time fighting one. But with the pinch whacker, he was no match for me. I did go ahead and craft the flippers as I forgot to earlier and I had enough to make a slime mountain at the crafting bench before we ventured out to do the breakers. Possibly the hardest one first through the broken part and once upon a time there used to be a fan that would push the air back on you making this even harder but they got rid of that as it simply was just a bit too difficult. Flipping the breaker on it was then time to go back quickly. I'd come back for the toxicology ornament card a little bit later. Second one's easy enough, it's literally just outside the laboratory. And third one's guarded by a couple of the diving bell spiders, but again, relatively easy to get and turn on. I can now go straight up to the moon pool door, as I'll be able to get in this way rather than going through the labs. And we've done it, we turn on all the breakers and now add access fully to the rest of the lab. Don't forget to get some of the resources in the second part of it, especially around the corner here, there's a chest as well as some of the upgrade materials on the actual bench here. Then through the underwater part again, making sure you bring plenty of torches as it gets incredibly dark down here. You're probably better off killing the diving bell spider here so you've got more oxygen and we're going to need to get the second figurine. Figurines being in pretty much every major laboratory. The only exception though is the black ant one which is locked behind the door that you have to complete all the mixers. But here you go, just nestled here is the koi. Turn the power on to the rest of the dome and we were pretty much nearly done. 
took care of some of the taste teas that would come out now and then the slightly more challenging dome room where there's at least two art bars and a taste tea or two you're better off using a hammer or a club against these guys but as long as you can block their shots you're good to go don't forget to peep all of them as well and you've got more chance of getting the gold cards here I used the resource analyzer to resource scan some of the items we got from the chest and then picked up all the muscle sprouts you can now grow your muscle sprouts in the farms but you can still get a ton more just come in here every few days as you can get a guaranteed amount of at least usually 30. picked up the second super duper disc as well as the next burgle chip and we opened up the pond dome not bad by day eight completing the hedge the pond the anthill and so much more i took the shortcut back up and we went and dumped some stuff and spoke to burgle to get more upgrades everything was going so well i just needed a few more pieces of bone to make the bone dagger as i'd be able to go and get some of the meat runners down below so i went back down to the t-rex and took care of the dime bell spider that was harassing me and started to dig up all of the bones and the quest scales in and around I had plenty of air, or so I thought, I had my flippers on. But as you might guess, this is where things start to go a little bit wrong. I had kept it pretty close to the edge, but decided this was the one I should go back up. And if I'd only just swam up at that point, I would have lived a little bit longer. Instead, I got greedy and decided to get one more scale. And then I stupidly kept on swimming to the top instead of trying to precision myself, where I'll definitely get the oxygen. I figured the oxygen would come up anyway, and to get it as it was swimming up and then I missed it by mere moments not once but twice I knew the end was here I panicked and paused the screen no and when I looked back in the inevitable happened day eight and my journey in my best ever starts grounded had ended so there's a lesson for you kids never get greedy never spend too much time in the water than you need to and don't be a tryhard I'm on today 11 on my latest run. We've done this four times now, but this was the best one I thought I would show you guys with some extra tips. Come check me out, JPG 100 Days, streaming more or less every day. I'll see you right back soon. Bye-bye.